What's going on guys, Manny G back here with you on Football with Flags. Thanks so much for joining us as always. Today's video is all about our group stage predictions for the 2024 Copa America. So sit back and join us while we take you through these group selections. Now, of course, Copa America, typically just a 10-team event with all the South American nations involved. But every so often, some of the CONCACAF teams getting invited, which again leads us to our 16-team field this time around for this summer with the United States, of course, hosting Mexico, Canada, Panama, Costa Rica, and Jamaica all invited from CONCACAF. Now, as you can see here beside me, the four groups that we'll see playing through the group stage and a lot of similar matchups that we saw in 2016. It is practically almost an identical field. The only difference being that we saw Haiti from CONCACAF involved in 2016. This time around, Canada is the one in that place with all the other five CONCACAF nations returning once again. So here we go into Group A with Argentina, Peru, Canada, and Chile. And I'll start off with Argentina right away. I really don't think we'll see much fuss from them at all. I think they'll get through the group stage pretty unscathed. Uh, no real issues, hopefully no injuries for them either. I think they take all nine points uh, that they can out of this group. Again, no major issues. But moving on down the line with these other three sides, I think you can seriously make a case for all three of these teams to potentially get out as that second place team. Currently, Peru are ranked 32nd in the world, Chile 42nd, and Canada 49th. Now, keep in mind, this is Canada's first opportunity in Copa America. They had never qualified before. I believe they did get invited uh, way back when at one point, but still were not involved in the competition. As for Peru and Chile, obviously they've been in this situation many times before, and I think that does say something in terms of just being able to go into this competition compared to Canada being debutantes. Obviously, we saw Canada, uh, how they performed in the 2022 World Cup not up to par the way that we saw them during World Cup qualifying. Hopefully that won't be the same case this time around, but I think it is pretty hard to judge. Uh, but for me, again, Peru, not really done all that great. They sit, currently sit in last place in World Cup qualifying at the moment uh, down in South America. Chile, uh, kind of mid-pack right now. Some pretty aging veterans on both of these sides. You know, we know that there's some fresh, you know, hungry, speedy talent on Canada's side. The big question for me, though, is their back line. How, what, how much will they be able to hold up against some of these South American attackers and midfielders uh, going forward, as well as their goalkeeping play uh, at the same time, too. For me, though, with that being said, I am going to take Chile as second place with four points. I think that they'll take gold differential over Peru, who will be in third, and unfortunately Canada down at the bottom. And the biggest reason why is just experience. Uh, when you look at Alexis Sanchez, Fidal, uh, Bravo, others, you know, hopefully they'll all be involved. Obviously, aging veterans, we'll see how many minutes that they get compared to some of these youngsters that Chile have. Uh, but still, I think that just Chile's presence being involved in this, the fact that they were in the 2016 final and beat Argentina here on U.S. soil, I think pays dividends for them as well. Certainly going to be hungry to come back and try and win it again eight years down the road. And for Peru, I really, for a good portion of the time while I was trying to do this, I had them in second place. Uh, but just considering the recent form with World Cup qualifying, I'm just not 100% confident this, this, this team's going to be able to get out of the group. And so that's why I have them finishing a third. And then Canada, again, I think this is a great experience for them, just getting some good minutes under their belt, playing some really highly talented teams that they're going to potentially see down in the road uh, here in a couple years' time, which I think is super important for them, regardless whether they get out of the group or not, playing these important games on U.S. soil. Obviously, then you know they'll have the opportunity to play in Canada as well during the 2026 World Cup. But still, I think this is a huge moment for them. Uh, hopefully, they'll perform better than what I have predicted uh, here in this video. But still, a great opportunity against some South American uh, opponents. Now on to Group B, and to be totally honest with you, I think this group is fairly wide open. We've got Mexico, Ecuador, Venezuela, and Jamaica. We'll start off with Ecuador, um, who currently are fifth in World Cup qualifying in Conma Ball. Not too bad, considering they did have a points deduction at the beginning and lost three points. They currently have eight, um, but again, could potentially be sitting a bit higher at the moment. The last time, though, that this team made a semifinal in Copa America was 1993, so it does not bode well for them for the fact that they've been able to make it out of the group a lot in, in years since, but not been able to get past that first round. For me, though, I still have them winning this group. I do have them with seven points. I think they'll get the job done if Inter Valencia is in form, if Caicedo can step up. 
step up Gruezo and some others. I think that this team could really put on a good performance. Uh, you know, again, they were very close to getting out of the group in the round or in the uh, World Cup in 2022 before getting bumped out by Senegal in the very end. I think this this group is going to concede a lot of goals all the way across the board. I think we could see some pretty high scoring games potentially uh, with them. But moving on, again, a very tight battle for that second place spot between Mexico, Jamaica, and Venezuela. Uh, for me, Venezuela, they've been very impressive in World Cup qualifying as of late. Hopefully, Rincon and Rondon step up, have some great minutes, and put on a great show. Uh, but I think they have a lot of questions, too, surrounding their roster. If you look at their current roster and the recent call-ups, it looks like they've got 50 some odd players potentially that they might be looking at for this roster. So they're going to have to make a lot of cuts, try and draw that down. And it might be easier. Uh, you know, they might have just been able to get these guys some minutes uh, with some friendlies in the last year or so. But again, a lot of guys that they're potentially looking at going forward, hopefully trying to uh, make some strong moves uh, to help build this team for the future. Uh, but for Jamaica, again, this is a much different team than we saw in 2016. We'll see how much Leon Bailey is going to help this team out. And he's been in pretty good form for Aston Villa. Mikel Antonio, Damari Gray. Obviously, we'll see what you know Damian Lowe and Andre Blake and them can do in the back. Uh, for me, though, the big question surrounding Jamaica is their midfield. Uh, you know, tactically wise, in possession, out of possession, if they get caught uh, in some bad situations, are they going to be able to recover in time, not leave their back line stranded? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, and for Mexico, again, still a lot on the table. What's this culture going to look like? What's the environment going to look like for this team? Obviously, we're going to see a lot of pro-Mexico crowds, which is going to be great for them if they're able to build momentum and play well. But we can see that that can kind of turn on them as well if they're not doing all that great or they concede in difficult moments. Uh, and again, a lot of questions just still around the Mexican national team. Yeah, they've had some decent results as of late. Got the Gold Cup. Uh, last summer, but again, the recent form against the United States, I think, speaks volumes too with just kind of where this team's at right now. I do still have Mexico getting out of the group in second place with four points. I think they'll take goal differential over Jamaica, who will finish third, and then I've got Venezuela in fourth, but still all, all around a very tight group, in my opinion, uh, with a lot of potential outcomes. Now on to Group C, and we've got the United States, Uruguay, Panama, and Bolivia, and I'll cut to the chase right away. I do think Uruguay and the United States get out of this group, and <clears throat> straight from the get, I think Uruguay wins the group. I do believe that Uruguay and the U.S. will draw in their final game. I think both teams take seven points apiece and move out of this group, but Uruguay will get it through goal differential, and the biggest reason why is because I think the game between Panama <clears throat> and the United States is going to come into play. Obviously, for those two sides, a bit more meaningful considering the, the games they've had in the past as of late. Of course, Panama, remember, beat the U.S. in the Gold Cup semifinal in penalties. Sure, it was a different roster for the U.S. at the time, but still, I think that game's going to mean a little bit more something than when Panama played Uruguay. Hence, why I think Uruguay is going to get a bit of a jump on Bolivia uh, and Panama in the group in terms of goal differential to take the top spot. With that being said, though, the U.S. have outscored Panama in their other three games recently, 9-0. Again, that doesn't mean anything once we get to these 90 minutes, but still, I think it's going to be enough that the U.S. will get past Panama. I think it will be a tricky game for them, considering these sides are very familiar with each other as well. Uh, but the U.S., of course, still getting out of the group in second. Good news for Panama, I do have them defeating Bolivia. Um, <clears throat> and for them, hopefully, this is just a great chance as well in terms of playing some really important games and trying to continue this good form that they've been on going forward with the next two years, obviously trying to qualify for 2026 and be one of the other teams involved with CONCACAF. I very much think that they can do it. Remember, they qualified in 2018, looking for their second bid ever. I think they have a great shot, some really good young talent to potentially get there. And for Bolivia, obviously no more Martins. He's retired now. So in terms of goal scorers, somebody's got to step up. And I just don't see too many options, in my opinion, that are going to be able to do so <clears throat> in the short amount of time to potentially get them out of this group. So I do have them at the bottom. Our final group, Group D, of course, with Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, and Paraguay. And we'll start with Paraguay with Almiron and Romero, a couple of guys who I think is going to be very important for this team in terms of their attack, ability to create chances. The question is, though, is how many can they convert? Can they put some of these teams uh, on thin ice with some potential upsets? I really don't see it happening. I do have them at the bottom of this group with just a point moving forward, though. 
in terms of the top of this table, I do have Brazil getting through with seven points. I don't think they'll have much fuss at all getting through this group stage, take care of their business, hopefully get some other guys some good minutes as well, uh, and you know be able to rest some players at different times too. But I do think that they'll draw with Colombia in their one fixture. And the biggest reason why is because Colombia is 12-3-0 in their last 15 games unbeaten. I think Luis Diaz is a potential Golden Boot winner. Could see him win some other awards in this tournament as well if Colombia make a deep run. And they've just been playing great. Uh, they have a lot of great options across the board. They're doing really well in World Cup qualifying at the moment too. I think they're in the top three right now in Conmebol. And just a fantastic team to watch. I think that they will finish second with five points, but they do, in my opinion, get another draw against Costa Rica. Costa Rica, for me, again, a team that we've seen in the past have some unbelievable performances in some major tournaments, but they've been very inconsistent as of late. Uh, you know, again, this team can create a lot of good opportunities in front of goal. The question is, though, can they convert them and at the same time not hurt themselves in the back as well? We've seen them give away some cheap fouls, have some poor decisions defending uh, both making tackles and just in play uh, tactically wise and stuff as well. I think that, you know, again, they're going to show some really great signs in this tournament, but with that inconsistency, I think they're going to have some poor moments as well. So I have them finishing third with just two points in Group D. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, thanks again so much for watching. Make sure you let us know down in the comments your own predictions for the group stage with this as well. We're going to have knockout stage predictions along with Euro predictions and other stuff coming your way, along with some other interesting videos about different topics across the international game. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you haven't already done so. And until next time, guys, we'll see you soon. Peace.